So in, in the uh, video on Eastwood that I found, uh, Gene had some denim jeans as kind of like a rag to dress the, the paddle. So the denim is not a very good rag if you if you've ever tried to use it, it's pretty terrible. So in that case, it doesn't absorb a lot and it doesn't like leave all kinds of mess on your paddle. So we'll get this tallow heated up. It's kind of like butter. So you get a little heat on it and it gets liquidy very fast. So you see it's like, so I'm just gonna scrape some and then we'll throw it on the jeans here and kind of get this wet. Plus I think the denim resists starting on fire. So you don't want a lot on your paddle, like you don't want globs like that. You kind of melt it off and the jeans kind of help keep it as thin as possible. And then once you got it good, it's just a shiny, you know, surface and you can go back and kind of touch it up if the lead starts to stick. All right, let me interject this real quick while I'm thinking about it. Now I bought these new, these are fairly new lead sticks and uh, they come wrapped in this bubble wrap, which has got some adhesive on it. So we'll just get rid of this with our acetylene rag. I'm just gonna, or not acetylene, acetone rag. Give these a quick wipe down in case there's any plastic residue or pieces of shipping material stuck, stuck to it. So you don't want contaminants in here. And I guess that's the biggest key. If you ever soldered pipes, you know, clean is your friend. So it can never be too clean uh, when you're soldering, whether it be your solder being clean or your pipes or using the proper flux and the right amount of flux. So clean the stuff off of there and we'll start sticking this in here. I'm going to start at the top and work my way down, but basically you see the, sh the surface is kind of like a dull shape or color. You want to start heating it. You want to heat it evenly. And we're probably going to boil some water out of here. You want to hand me that acetone rag real quick, Rick? Okay, so we still have some residue in here we want to get rid of. You want to preheat the rod a little bit too to make it soft because the sheet metal is going to heat up a lot faster than the rod. When you start getting it hot, you'll start to see the color change on the on it. You see there, it's starting to go. So it doesn't take too much heat to make it run. See, it's already a little too hot. So I'm getting too aggressive with my flame. Basically, you want to start piling this in there. Now the other side I ended up using like five sticks. 
Now that could be a little bit too aggressive or too much. But I'd rather have a little too much and file it off than not enough. Because it's, it's really hard to go back after you start like working it and filing it. So it's just best to, best to, in my opinion, just to kind of overlet it. Especially with, I guess, lack of experience in doing this. I suppose if I was doing this more frequently, I would have a better idea how much is good enough and what, what's not good enough. Ah, got too hot. But you can see the metal, the sheet metal of the car will really start to go before the bars will. So it's just a matter of playing the game of, you know, heat. And then depending on how you carry your flame, if it's on an angle or if it's directly at the car, you can kind of control it a little bit more. It's not a very fast process. As you can see, it's kind of a slower process, and it, it takes some it takes some time, and I guess a little bit of patience.
So the thicker you put, make the lead. Like this stuff on the outside is gonna melt right away because of the flame. So you kind of want to heat slow and make sure you kind of like heat soak it. The more, the thicker the lead, the more you have to heat. And it's it's just a kind of a game playing back and forth with the heat and not getting it too hot, but not getting it too liquidy and checking it and checking it. <laughs> and watching it go from that dull gray to almost a shiny, a shiny tin color. It's starting to go now. A little more heat. You see the shine, Rick? Oh, I see it. There it goes. There it goes. Feels though I'm gonna have to add a little bit more lead. Uh, can you grab me those vice grips that have the copper on it there?
looks pretty good to me. Yeah, it's warm a little bit. All right. That to me feels like I got plenty on there. Actually, that might be a little bit of a crater. Get a little bit of this lead here and there. Lead's on, it's cool. What we're gonna do is now file it and work with what we got here. Like I said, I'm not going and adding more if it's low. There's plenty on there, I think, so if there's a couple low spots, plastic filler it is, because this is getting a vinyl top and I don't care. Oh, that's the one thing I wanted to do. Get my plastic catch bag. Make cleanup life a little easier. Now you can see like I'm hitting metal here and it's scratching away that tin and then I, you can't once you scratch away that tin lead won't stick to the metal anymore so adding lead becomes a hugely difficult process because you have to then get the tin back on there you have to reflux it and to do that and heat the panel hot enough to flux but not hot enough to melt this it just makes a big mess so it's really a process where you can't go backwards you don't want to. You're better off putting way too much lead on there, filing it down, than trying to add more, at least in my opinion. And like I said, to me, this filled it enough to where I'm happy. So even though there might be a low spot here and there, I'm not super worried about it. At least the bulk of it isn't plastic filler. So. Now, why didn't you want it? Why didn't you just plastic fill the whole thing? I think I did it a couple reasons. The strength of lead and the flex, the somewhat flexibility of it, uh, for one, sunlight heat won't affect it. There's guys out there, like somebody commented on some of my pictures that he wishes he did lead in this scene because I don't know, his car must have been same situation or he took the lead out and put, uh, I forget what the hell he said he used, some sort of reinforced filler and he said in the sunshine on a hot summer day at a car show, like you can walk by in that roof line, you can see a little wave because the plastic expands and contracts with the heat differently. So you get, you can see the shadow line. So.
getting there. You could tell it takes off a lot of lead. Each stroke. Yeah. Now before you freak out and think I'm killing Rick with some lead poisoning, this is like 24 grit paper. It's like, I don't even call it sandpaper. I think they're called like file paper. It's so coarse. So just trying to get in here where I can't get the file too well. Dumb this down. Feels a little high right here. So it looks like you're pretty much wrapping it up here. Pretty good, pretty close, yeah. I just have to cut the detail here a little bit, clean up some of this mess and dress the inside of the window ledge. Um, other than that, it looks pretty good. Got a couple little like, yeah, a little bit of, kind of like craters or pinholes maybe where the lead was kind of funky. I didn't heat it quite enough mm -hmm. to melt it in. So, but I mean, this is getting a vinyl top correct. over it, so. Yep, nothing, I, I think it's just in the lead. I don't think it's anything that contaminant that came up. No. Just in maybe an errant air bubble. Uh, we did the front one while we were rolling along. So we threw the lead in there. I got to file that, shape that down and clean up the edges and well, make it look like the other side and it ain't gonna take too much more time, maybe another, you know, half hour, 45 minutes of filing and cutting away at it. And then, uh, then that's done. My next step is to get these pins cleaned up. These are the pin locations for the vinyl top trim. This car trim was taken off of it years ago. All the studs were missing on the whole thing. However, the studs locations on the right side of the car were holes. So I don't know if they, when they broke them off, they just broke through and, and uh, popped a hole in the panel. Because the driver's side, all the pin locations were there, except for that one, they looked like this. You can see the little, the little divot where the pin was. So they must have just ground those down instead of ripping them out like they did over there. Um, did pick up a pin stud gun 
So um, if you haven't done these, which I, this is the first time I did it, I have a Harbor Freight stunt, uh, stud welder. So this is your, you know, your typical body stud welder. It puts the pins on the car uh, so you can slide hammer dents off. Well, they make a tip for it, which I, th I bought on online somewhere. I can't remember, but it's a recessed solid. There's, there's no, there's no hole through it. It's, it's a complete solid and the pins go on it like that. So what you do is you put your, you get a package. I think it's like the hell 500 pack, 500 pins. Hmm. And there it is. So that's your trim stud. And they're steel with a copper coating. So they've got a magnet in the tip, which was kind of convenient. And all you do is basically you put your stud in there like that. You find your location, you zap it, and boom, your pin's on the car. So I did that to these three. This one kind of got beat up from me filing this, so I should have done it after the fact. Uh, just, you know, overlap thought process, but uh, they, they, they're they on there pretty damn good. So then the uh, plastic trim clips go on there. Um, this car had a bolt-on. I bought a kit and I'm kind of confused by it because the kit comes with four of the long plastic ones. Now there's three pins here, four, five here. I don't know why, but then this clip kit had a bolt uh, retainer for the front, I believe, and a different style plastic retainer in the large hole. I think originally these were bolt on at the ends and then all of these were clips. So I don't know if I have maybe the incorrect clip kit because it's uh, basically marked for 71 to 74. This is a 71, but it's an early car. So it may have used the 70 style clips and retainers. Don't know, but we'll get it on there somehow. But uh, that's pretty much it for now. Get it ready for some epoxy primer and cover up all this stuff and, and keep moving on.